Hello students, my name is Neerthi Said and thanks for watching Edpedia Word videos. My topic for the presentation is the 8th section of the chapter Neural Control and Coordination. In this section of presentation, we'll be studying about the mechanism of vision. In my previous sections of the presentation, I have already taught you the eye structure the muscles of the eye and the protective structures of eye and the glands of eyes. But in this section of presentation, we'll be studying about the mechanism of vision. That means how eye works. Eye works on the same principle as that of camera. Before going on to the mechanism of vision, I just want to summarize the parts of the eye. Okay, that will be helpful in understanding the mechanism of vision. So, this is your cornea. Cornea, it helps uh, in incoming light rays. They are initially bent by the cornea. Okay, as you can see, this is your object and the light ray got bent by the cornea. See, this light ray got bent. Okay, now comes ciliary body. Ciliary body, this is the muscles of the ciliary body. They control the shape of the lens. Okay, because uh, this is your lens and uh, these are your ciliary muscles which are attached to the lens. So, you can say that the lens uh, aperture is controlled by the ciliary body. And these are your blood vessels. These are the retinal uh, arteries and vein supply that it supplies nutrients and it removes waste from the retina. Okay. Now, what is retina? Retina is a light sensitive cell that contains uh, photoreceptor cells such as rods and cones uh, that transforms light into the electrical nerve signals and then our brain interprets the information and then we can see the image of an object okay now what is this this is your macula macula is the area of the retina that surrounds the fovea that means the central part of macula this is your central part of the macula is known as fovea fovea is responsible for detailed vision detailed vision means uh, uh, detailed resolution okay so fovea it contains the high density of cone cells there are two types of cells rod and cones so fovea it contains a high number of cone cells okay and this is your optic nerve optic nerves fibers of the optic nerve they carry impulse from retina to the brain then light uh, then uh, this is your lens lens it provides fine focusing of the light rays and these are your iris iris uh, the is a ring of muscles in the iris that controls the pupil size to allow in more or less light and this is your pupil pupil is the space between iris see this is iris and this is iris and the space between uh, iris is known as pupil so the light ray enter the pupil to reach the retina okay now please note that the mechanism of vision that is our eye works on the same principle as that of camera See, this is the object and the light is reflected from an object travels in all directions. See, this is the, uh, traveling in this direction and this is traveling in this direction and this is traveling in this direction. Okay. So, some light ray, it enters the eye. See, this has entered the eye. Now, the cornea, it initially bends the light ray. See, this is your light ray and cornea, it bends the light ray so the light ray has been bent okay and uh, see that uh, from here uh, some rays enters like this and it is bent by the cornea and it goes like this and now the inverted image is formed on retina see object was 
erect here but the image is inverted here so the image is inverted the image on the retina is upside down okay so our eye works on the same principle as that of camera that means the light rays from the object it pass through the conjunctiva this is your conjunctiva and uh, then cornea this is your cornea then aqueous humor this is your aqueous humor this light blue color part and then lens this is your lens and then vitreous humor in order that means the order of moving the light ray is from conjunctiva cor cornea aqueous humor lens and vitreous humor all these structures they reflect the light such that it falls on the retina this is called as focusing but the maximum focusing is done by cornea and lens okay this is your lens and this is your cornea so the maximum focusing is done by cornea and lens now this light is received by the photoreceptor cells which are present in the retina this is your retina and photoreceptor cells are known as rod cells and cone cells the absorbed light it activates the pigment present in the rod and the cone cells see as i have told you that two types of uh, cells are present in the retina first is rod and second is cone so the absorbed light it activates the pigment present in the rod and the cones thus the light is converted into action potential in the membrane of the vesicles these travel as nervous impulse through the rod or the cone cell and reach the synaptic knobs synaptic knobs and synapses i have already taught you in my previous section of the presentation please refer to that now the nervous impulse that are generated in the retina that means the image which is inverted which is formed here in the retina they are the nervous impulses they travel and they are carried to the brain by about millions of neurons of the optic nerve this is your optic nerve now the vision is controlled by the occipital lobe which is present at the back of the brain i have already taught you what is occipital lobe so please refer to that presentation so the vision of human eye is controlled by the occipital lobe which is present at the back of the brain now the information received is processed and we are able to see the image but please note that the image formed on retina is inverted but image which we see is erect because our brain possesses a uh, process that information and makes it makes the inverted image into an erect image okay so though the eyes are essential for vision any damage to the optic nerve also results in the impairment of the vision okay so this is how it uh, happens this is the summary okay so the light rays from the object see this is your ice cream which is an object so the light rays from the object it passes through the conjunctiva this is your conjunctiva cornea aqueous humor this is aqueous humor then lens then vitreous humor and then uh, on the retina see this is an erect object but the image formed on the retina is inverted that means just ulta okay so all these structure they reflect the light such that it falls on the retina and this is called as focusing as i have told you that maximum focusing is done by cornea and the lens the light then falls on retina see and the image form this inverted now the brain it it you can say uh, the nervous impulse is generated in the retina and they are carried to the brain by about millions of neurons to the optic nerve and through optic nerve it reaches to the 
brain and the vision is controlled by the occipital lobe present at the back of brain see the occipital lobe is this one it is present at the back of the brain okay so the information received is processed and we are able to see the image the image formed on the retina is inverted however the brain makes us see the image erect so this is how it happens or this is how we see our things or, or the images of an object clearly and that is uh, in the erect form okay now see uh, iris reflex see these are the ciliary muscles uh, these are the circular muscles that they contract and they relax in the you can say bright light circular muscles they contract like this see the muscles have been now contracted and the radial muscles they just relax and thus pupil constricts in the bright light so that uh, much light should not enter the uh, enter our eye otherwise it would hamper or it would impair our vision okay so in the bright light circular muscles they contract but the radial muscles these are the radial muscles and they just relax and the pupil constricts okay but on the contrary to this in the dim light circular muscles these are your circular muscles they just relax and the radial muscles they contract these are your radial muscles okay so the bold radial muscles shows that they contract and here the shrink uh, radial muscles they show that they are relaxed okay so the radial muscles they contract and the pupil dilates okay so that we can see much of the things in the dim light also okay so this is the iris reflex now there are two kinds of photoreceptors which are present in the retina they are of two types first is your rod and second is your cone cells first we'll study about the rods rods they are very sensitive and they help us to see in the dim light that means in the dim light what we uh, see see this here in the dim light circular muscles they relax and the radial muscles they contract and the pupil dilates so the rods they are very sensitive and they help us to see in the dim light that is in a very low light region they are also very sensitive to movements particularly at the edge of our vision but they are not sensitive to color now who is sensitive to color then for this reason color perception is partly lost when there is little light that's the reason you cannot see colored things in the light region area little light region for that reasons cones are there cone cells are there cone they give us color vision they function best in bright light and that is the region in the bright light we can clearly see the colored objects so the cones they are most concentrated in in our area of central vision this is the rod cell and these are the cone cells okay so two type of uh, cells or the photoreceptors are found in the retina first is rod and second is your cone cell rods they are very sensitive and they help us see in the dim light whereas cone cells they help in uh, in the perception of the color okay that means they give us color vision and they best function in bright light that means this rod cells they function in dim light whereas cone cells they function in bright light and in the fovea centralis portion of the eye cone cells are densely found okay please note that now as i have told you that rods rods and cones they are the photoreceptor
pictures. So the light is received by the photores. The light from the object is received by the photoreceptors that is rods and cones which are present or tensely found in the retina. See this is our retina. Okay. Now the absorbed light it activates the pigment present in the rods and cones. That means the light which is absorbed from the object, it activates the pigment which is present in the rod and cone. The pigments, they are present on the membranes of the vesicles. Thus the light is then converted into action potential in the membranes of the vesicle. That means here in the retina rods and cones are present. So the object light is absorbed and it forms the inverted image here on the retina and it activates the rods and the cones of the retina and these light is then converted into action potential in the membrane of the vesicles. And these travel as nervous impulses through the rod or cone cells. And they reach synaptic knobs. Synaptic knobs and synapses I have already taught you in my previous section of the presentation. So please refer to that. And from here the impulses they are transmitted to the bipolar nerve cells. Bipolar nerve cells I have also taught you in my previous section of the presentation. And uh, then they reach to the optic nerves. Uh, here somewhere here optic nerve is present so uh, through optical nerve it reaches to the brain uh, to the brain and to which part of the brain occipital lobe of the brain which controls the vision of the human eye okay so thus the nervous impulse generated in the retina they are carried to the brain by about million neurons of the optic nerves now the electrical signals from the photoreceptor travels to a part of the brain called as thalamus via active uh, optic nerve. Okay. See this is our two eyes. Okay. And this is our brain. This is our uh, visual cortex. Okay. So this is how uh, the pattern of the thing, uh, pattern of the vision takes place these are our two uh, one pair of eyes two eyes uh, so the electrical signal from the photoreceptors travel to the part of the brain called thalamus and uh, it via the optical nerve see this is optical nerve okay and from here the electrical signals are being traveled okay this area act as relay station that combines information from two eyes see we have two eyes right so it combines the information from two eyes the, uh, this is our optic chiasma and optic chiasma it combines the information from two eyes okay and send on the information received to an area which is known as visual cortex that means it reaches finally here and here Okay, so the visual cortex is a specialized part of a brain that possess, processes visual information located at the back of the head, which we also call it as occipital uh, lobe. And it in, interprets the electrical signals to obtain information about the object color, shape and depth. Other part of the brain then put this information together to create the whole picture. So this is how the electrical signal it travels and then it combines the information from two eyes and then finally it reaches to the visual cortex region where uh, it processes visual information which is obtained from the two eyes. Okay. So this is how it happens. Now the vision is controlled by the occipital lobe uh, as I have told you which is present at the back of the brain. And the information received is processed and we are able to see the image that is erect image even after forming the uh, inverted image on the retina but our 
brain it converts the inverted image into an erect image and then and that is the reason we are able to see the erect image okay the image formed on retina is inverted but however brain make use make us see the image erect so though the eyes are essential for vision any damage to the optic nerve also results in the impairment of vision New researches has clogged that human beings as being able to process entire image flashed before the eyes in as little as 13 milliseconds. That means uh, our brain, it shows us the image of the object in just 13 milliseconds. Okay how fast it is now overview of the visual processing that how it takes place see this is our retina okay uh, these are the rods and the cone cells okay these are the rods and the cone cells these are the bipolar uh, nerve cells and these are the ganglion cells, uh, cells okay so when the retina forms an inverted image and light is absorbed by the rods and the cones which are present in the retina so they forms an inverted image on the retina now this uh, image is traveled or by the neuron impulses by the bipolar nerve cells and then it reaches to the ganglion cells via optic nerve and then it reaches the lateral geniculate nucleus of the thalamus that is LGN and it reaches the occipital lobe of the brain which helps in the visual processing okay and that's the reason with why we see the uh, inverted image into an erect image that means a brain make us see an erect image of an inverted image otherwise we would we would not be able to see the erect image of an object because the uh, light is bent by the cornea and they they forms a inverted image on the retina so our occipital lobe which is uh, which helps uh, or make us see our object in the erect form okay so this is the overview of the visual processing that how it goes okay so this was all about uh, the visual processing in my next section of the presentation will be studying about the how we see nearby objects and how we see far by objects okay so till then stay tuned and keep watching edupedia word videos